Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? I am your Planetary Defense Commander, Star Lord New Thor 7. I got $407 to go in my monthly fundraiser with three days left. And I feel great. How are you? Yeah, I was in like a funk for like 11 days, which is weird. Because if I get in a funk, I usually get out of it pretty fast. But November came, and man, do I feel fantastic. I want to thank and congratulate everybody for making it through October. That was a very stormy month. November should not be as bad. We are looking at the next 48 hours of precipitation. And overall, except for the north, central, America, United States stuff, things should be pretty calm for like 10 days. I mean, you're going to get cold, though. Probably really cold. Unless you're in the southern tip of Florida, then you're going to get hot, baby. You're going to get really hot. Although, right now, Europe is dealing with it, and the West Pacific is dealing with it, and India's dealing with it, but in the United States of America, we get a well-deserved break. Although we do have chance tropical activity around the 10th to the 14th of November. We'll keep an eye on it. Although we've been really, really lucky all hurricane season. I hope you get that pleasant surprise today. You deserve it. Honestly, God, how did I get to be so lucky? And thank you, Tawny. I promise your t-shirts and the t-shirts will be on the way before Thanksgiving, but absolutely, definitely before Christmas. I hope you guys had a good Halloween. I stayed in the foxhole. That's what I've been doing most of the time. But my seven-year anniversary is coming up. I plan to get out of the foxhole more. Now let's get to the meat and the potatoes. Tropical trackers Maha is posing a threat to India at this time with dangerous rip currents. However, it could pose a bigger threat as shown in the latest forecast track. The cyclone is expected to make a sharp turn to the east and possibly make landfall in India soon. We will keep an eye on this. I guess fires technically count as weather. And so I may have spoken a little too soon because we're going to be dealing with wildfires probably through December. And then it'll probably get really, really, really rainy. But it looks like when these fires go down, the wildfire period will be nowhere near as intense for at least another week or two. So that is good news. But at the moment... The massive Kincaid fire is now at 65% containment. We're closely watching the development of the Maria fire. The Kincaid fire burned 77,000 acres. The Maria fire, which is 0% contained, has burned 8,000 acres. And the Getty fire burned 745. And I don't know who that pretty lady is, but like me, she's wishing you all a very happy new month. Hello, November. I don't really like spooky. But man, I love Thanksgiving because I have so much to be thankful for. And I thank you guys. And Christmas and New Year's. But yeah, the storm that went to the northeast was a pretty big one. Mike Haggett, 165 storm reports and counting as of 2 p.m. today, logged for our four northwest offices across six states, part of a seventh. This was a corker. Yeah, you had wind, wind events happening all up and down and that was just this part they definitely got some wind parts down there mike with the most will fairly solid guidance agreement that temperatures across the eastern u.s will average below normal for the first two weeks of november by mid-month there are some signs of a potential moderation in warm-up but it's too soon to say it will bear watching looks like our next big cold snap will happen around the 9th or 10th of November. But, man, it is super amazing here in Houston today. And I guess it's like 50, 60 degrees. Maybe colder, but it just feels wonderful. Why does the air feel crisper and cleaner and better when it's cold? I don't even know, but I got to tell you, I'm like 95% Viking. So I, I, I like cold as opposed to being very hot. 
And so one thing, I'm trying to back away from the predictions, but I do want to say that I noticed, you know, on the like October being the stormiest month of the year, which I got correct, that I noticed on the dip down of Eris, meaning like three months from now, um, that is when the, it gets earthquakey. It seems this is another theory we'll have to watch. But what I'm trying to say is we're definitely going to be watching out for the West Coast of the United States and California specifically. I got a feeling about Christmas, the full solar eclipse, and that being the Eris earthquake midpoint. Uh, so around the Christmas point is when we will be watching for the heaviest earthquake activity on my prediction guess, Eris thingy. And so, you know, and I'd all, I'd said earlier that there's a 75%, earlier by last year, that there's a 75% chance of major earthquake in California and along the West Coast in 2018 and 95% chance in 2019. So it's just something to pay attention to. And if anyone in California was thinking about taking a trip away from there around Christmas and New Year's, hey, maybe that's a great idea. I hope we get snow in Texas this year. Ryan Heron, Han, Bra, and quite the cold shot expected later next week. We're forecasting highs in the 30s. And so, yeah, look at this. Where the hot side is hot. And the cold side is cold. And they duke it out. And it gets real stormy in the middle. Yeah, we're definitely watching, man. We're watching the things. And um, I want to take this time to say, you know, I, I don't put any stock in politics at all here at Thor News. Um, and sometimes when people do, they lose track of the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that I think it's a clear evidence that with 2 million power outages total on the West Coast and East Coast within the last 24-hour period, it's pretty clear-cut as your planetary defense commander that we need some type of national power grid. Now, I know a lot of people freak out over the ism words, like capitalism, communism, socialism, and um, we can't let that be a barrier between common sense and that, you know, our the free market is not really great at handling every single problem out there, man. So all I'm trying to say is that, like, you know, if there's one thing with the new big election coming in 2020 and all the gas giants on the same side, it is our responsibility as people to push it upon our politicians, both right and left, that we need a national power grid. We need some type of we're all in this together power system to where we upgrade our energy infrastructure, dude. I mean, it's just, it's, we need new solutions as, did I get cut off? Was that even on? What is going on? And, and happy X-Men November and December, everybody. And now I give thee a goat in a coat. Hoorah, taking a minute to thank all the soldiers out there who are deployed. May we get into the age of world peace soon. But thank you for defending us. And um, after seven years of doing Thor News, you know, 50% of the USA believes the Earth is warming. 50% of the USA believes the Earth is cooling. I think it's a little bit of both. And a whole lot we don't know. As I mentioned before, we will be watching for a possible tropical activity coming out of the Gulf or around the 10th of November because the Gulf still has a lot of heat in it. And I know that Florida has been breaking heat records, South Florida, for the last two weeks. They're in the high 90s while everybody else has been breaking cold records. But we'll just keep our eye out. England and the UK seem to be having their non-Brexit Halloween parties get spoiled with some heavy winds and rain. Simon the King, it'll be very unpleasant start to the weekend. A deep area of low pressure moves 
in which brings heavy rain, but also very strong winds in southern England. Gusts potentially up to 80 miles per hour in exposed parts. Oh, exposed parts. And this is why Zach Covey specified South Florida. There's currently a 42 degree difference across the state of Florida. That's crazy. From 87 to 45. Yeah, man. It's a crazy time. Crazy days indeed. Man, I can't believe the year's almost over. I hope your new mouth is full of laughter, love, and good food. Yeah, dude. Congratulations, Astro Fight Club Astonishers. What a year, you know? But it's going to be earthquake eruption and, wait, volcano eruption and earthquake season for the next two to three years, specifically, and then six overall with all the gas giants on the same side. And so this is the November 1st Sakurai Jima eruption in Japan. Well, we just missed a... Hold on. Look at that. Yeah, so... We've been going through a pretty major solar minimum. And so the Earth has been getting hit with an increased amount of solar wind again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Which lights up the auroras and then goes into the Earth's core, which is just like a little star. And then it pops back up through magma, lava, earthquakes, and volcano eruptions. Pretty simple. And complex. I definitely need to do a Planet 9, Planet X, Planet... Update. Yeah, that's what I'm excited about, man. I get to do more space stuff through November. So, so I'm looking forward to that. And here's great news. I don't know if you're a big fan of the sun. Dave Dickinson, the appearance of an as-yet-unnumbered sunspot on the earthward face of Seoul today has broken the most recent 28 spotless stretch. Making for 228 days overall spotless in 2019, it looks like the spot is also a member of the new solar cycle number 25 and i noticed on that chart thing that like the best parts of my life happened during a solar maximum and the most challenging parts of my life happened during a solar minimum and so i didn't think the solar maximum or the new solar cycle would start till around the 21st or 23rd of november so this is encouraging and i just want to take i think it's going to be an exciting solar maximum that, that's my opinion we shall see. We had some minor earthquake activity in California today. 3.5. Tropical trackers tracking the action. Kayar is now a deep depression. Maha is still a tropical storm, but could gain strength soon. Matmo is still being watched. Rebecca turns post-tropical and still has American meteorologists pissed off that they've named her. And 99W has a chance, a medium chance of developing. And we have an area to watch near the Philippines. So our oceans are still active. And, um, but it's just on the other side of the pond. We've got more than 35,000 people left homeless from Central African Republic flooding. <sighs> Meredith Garofalo letting us know there's historic flooding. Heavy rainfall overnight has prompted evacuations in upstate New York. That's the part of New York that doesn't have a city in it. And even some water rescues. A flash flood emergency means that life-threatening flooding is occurring. Turn around. Don't drown. Yeah, so yesterday's storm was, 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 was a doozy. Note to self. Cover the story later and tell some jokes. It is kind of cute to watch the weather people fight over what should get a name and what shouldn't. An extremely concerning output this afternoon with the suggestion of wind gusts into the 60 to 65 mile per hour range possible inland. Wind gusts of 75 to 85 mile per hour are very possible across exposed coastal southwest England and Wales. Worth a name, I would think. Blimey. That was some Guardians of the Galaxy Jedi subliminal. I love you. Webcams de Mexico. 
Impressionists, Noobs, Lenticulars, Sobre, and Volcano Papakatepal. And this has been really the big story of 2019, weather-wise, in my opinion. And it's also one that has been covered the least, is the fact that this volcano in Mexico has been active every single day of 2019. I mean, it's literally, I think it's been the most active volcano in the world. And so that's like a big signal, I think, going into the next two, three years and for the whole West Coast, including California, Oregon, Washington, and Canada. You know? But you know, life is filled with danger. But yeah, so this is from today, and Papa Katapel has just been letting out the pressure, the ash, and the gas. And the New York Fed takes in $73 billion of securities in overnight repo. Okay, Tom Berg, the GEFs are tightly clustered on the next cold air outbreak being targeted at the Northeast rather than the Rockies and the Plains. The GEFs may be overdone with the magnitude of cold air and under dispersive, dispersive, as the ECM and EPS aren't as cold, but nonetheless, a pattern shift. What does that mean exactly? I don't know. We'll have to pay attention because everything shifts. So talking about predicting anything five days out, ten days out, the weirdest things have been usually doesn't come so hot, though we have hints, but I definitely think it's going to be a cold winter. I mean, it's going to switch on and off. It'll be cold, and then it'll heat up, and then it'll get cold, and then it'll heat up. But yeah, so in the last, in the last week, at one point, you had 1.8 million people on the West Coast without power. And the last night, I think you had 900,000 on the East Coast without power. It's a bit bumpy. This amplified Pacific pattern will bring highly anomalous warm conditions over the West with wintry temps from the northeastern two-thirds of the nation. By Michael Ventris. Yeah. Definitely. Man, I really hope we get snow this year. And so I'm in part of the blue. Where are you? And remember, the New Madrid earthquake in the middle of the United States happened when all the gas giants were on the same side. And that every major East Coast earthquake happened when all the gas giants were on the same side. So, you know, just because you don't live in California, and my discussions about the power grid, um, you know, it's just because it's not happening to you guys now, um, there may be big surprises over the next three years. You know, and at some point we have to adopt a we are all in this together American attitude. You don't like it? Tough shit. Because I'm tired of the doom. 20 years of doom, dude. You know, sound and prove things. Okay, I don't want to get all preachy teachy. Preachy teachy. Tom Berg, quite a way to kick off November. Maine is the warmest part of CONUS right now outside of Southern Florida. Yeah, dude. See, that is, it's. I mean, isn't that crazy how it's hot up here? But man, I love the cool here. And so there's something happening here. What it is, we're not perfectly clear. But I definitely think we could even see some surprise volcanoes out of the Caribbean. For sure. Man, do you remember the end of 2018 when they had that big blue light in New York? (laughs) That's crazy. And don't tell anybody, but I have a weird conspiracy theory that some type of volcanic emissions and activity have already taken place in California this year. Would our government be so hot to tell us? Interesting question. Interesting question. Special thanks to Cranky Weather Guy, um, who did who's done a fantastic job all year. And it's super, super cool. And special thanks to everybody out there for staying alive, staying cool. And if you've supported me in thoughts, prayers, I really, 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 really appreciate it. Uh, Contributions. And if you'd like to help make up the 407 for this month's goal, we are going to party in November because I've been doing this for seven years. And I've done a freaking great job. Uh, Although I made some mistakes. Nobody's perfect except for Jesus, but they crucified him. I really don't want to get crucified, man. What was he talking about? Oh, yeah. 
So if you want to thank me for all seven years or just a month or just can't wait for another month or two at Thor News, you can send me a letter. I appreciate every single letter in the mailbox. It always puts a big smile on my face. T. Lewis in 5430 Birdwood Road, number 416, Houston, Texas. I got a PayPal. It appears to be working again. Yay. A Venmo, a Cash App, a Patron. And special thanks again to Tawny, Lynn, Athena, Elizabeth, Linda, and Mark, Kenneth, and Frederick. Y'all are awesome. And thanks to Asteroid Fight Club, all the good people out there doing good things for other people and just staying cool and keeping your sense of humor, man. You know, I just want to thank everybody and say that I love you. I'm so glad to be in a good mood again. Um, and I'm going to stay hard at work definitely over the next three weeks because I'm going to be editing a lot of, you know, of the 2,700 videos I did and do a lot more space stuff and just trying to bring some more fun and cheer to this holiday run Sagittarius season. And it's my birthday in December and then it's Christmas and then it's New Year's and we got Thanksgiving and then I got like my seven year anniversary on the 23rd. I don't know. I'm, I'm in the mood to celebrate and I'm thankful for all that I have and I'm grateful for all that I have. Um, you know, the planetary defense commander's greatest job in the universe. And, and I still keep hope alive. And I think at some point we can grow up as a world and start to make some kick-ass choices. Anyway, I love you guys. Have a great day and stay cool. God bless everyone. Peace out.